With the soaring cost of higher education in California, who can afford to go to school and be able to pay for it? Learn more when we come back. In January, it's so nice. Hi, I'm Bruce Grantham, and welcome to Our Children, Our Future, the program about education in the South San Francisco Unified School District. With me tonight are Diana Brock, counselor from South San Francisco High School, and April McCoy, counselor from El Camino High School. Welcome to the program. Thank you for joining me tonight. Hi, Bruce. Uh, it used to be that you could get a good job and start a career with just a high school diploma, but the job market now is so competitive and becomes so, so specialized that a high school diploma really isn't enough anymore. Uh, students have to plan on continuing their education after high school. Uh, who can do that? Who should be going to school after high school? Actually, everyone and anyone can go to college or vocational training school after, after high school. There are four-year colleges, st such as CSUs, state colleges, San Francisco State, San Diego State, Cal Poly. UC colleges, UC Davis, UC Berkeley, um, independent and private colleges, Stanford, St. Mary's, Dominican, the Colin Culinary Institute, Academy of Fine Arts, two-year colleges where then you would transfer to a four-year college, um, community college such as Skyline City College, CSM, Kenyatta. Also, uh, trade or vocational colleges, uh, Bryman, which uh, medical, business, massage therapy, healed. Um, Skyline Community College also has programs for automotive, cosmetology. Um, also, you do not have to graduate high school to attend um, community college. You have to be 18 years of age. Um, you do not have to graduate high school or earn your GED. Um, you can also apply to colleges if you do not have a social security number, if you are not documented. Um, it, is an, it is under the AB 540 law, and you need to attend high school in California for three or more years, graduate from a California high school or pass the GED, and file an affidavit, affidavit with a college or university stating that the student has applied for a lawful immigration status or will apply as soon as a student is eligible to do so. That's important. And one mm -hmm. of the things I forgot to tell our viewers is, is grab a piece of paper and a pencil because there's going to be some information you're going to want to take down. What kind of preparation should a high school student uh, have to maximize their opportunities after high school? Well, if they plan on attending a four-year college, a state or a UC directly out or independent college directly from high school, they need to meet certain requirements. They are called the A through G requirements, which are four years of English, um, three years of math, social science, um, science with the lab, foreign language, visual and performing arts, and college prep electives. Along with that, they need to take tests. The SAT, t SAT ones are tests um, that they, they have to take in order to go to a state college. SAT 1s and SAT 2s are needed for UC and independent colleges. So course requirements and tests that will, that, that will uh, uh, qualify them for various colleges and universities. Exactly. Um, if they plan on going to a community college, they can enroll. They have to, they can, anyone can enroll. Um, they do have to take a math and English placement test. Um, so they would have to look at the community college and find the dates out for that. Uh, trade and vocational colleges, I would recommend that they, they contact a representative for, for, which, for whichever school they plan on attending to, um, to get information. Diana, 
with 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 costs being so high for all of these except for community colleges which is very 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 reasonable and a lot of students take advantage of that opportunity does a family have to mortgage their homes raid grandma savings in order to in order to go to school after high school not at all there is actually quite a wide variety of different ways that students can earn or receive money to go to school to continue that higher education um, one way is through FAFSA which is the free application for federal student aid and um, the application for that would start January 1st of 2005 and students can apply for that either online at www.fafsa.ed.gov or they can pick up a paper application and uh, financial aid is basically broken down into four awards and there are grants this is where you need your, your, your pencil and paper <laughs> Uh, grants are free monies that the student will not have to pay back, and there's three different types of Cal grants. There's Cal Grant A, which is a competitive grant, meaning that the student must have a 3.0 or higher GPA. And one of the nice things about a Cal grant is if the student chooses to start off at a community college first and then transfer, that financial aid will actually hold that Cal grant for up to three years. The next grant is a Cal Grant B, and that's a financial it's based off of income or financial need, and the student must have a 2.0 or higher to qualify for that one. Cal Grant C are for students who are going to be entering into the occupational or career training programs. This is all free money? All free. Don't have to pay it back? Not a cent. Okay. What um, else is available? The next would be scholarships, and there are a wide variety of different scholarships out there, and one of them through financial aid are what we call school-based scholarships, and those monies will vary based off of the school that the student is applying to and what monies that this that school has available to give to the students and um, they come in there for in, in the way of I would say different type of school scholarships such as San Francisco State Grant or Cal Berkeley Grant or Santa Clara University so Grant. So they're given by the, the various schools? Uh -huh. Yes. Um, there's also the work study program and this again is money you do not have to pay back and basically what that is is financial aid allots a certain amount of money a semester for the student as long as the student takes a federal work study job on campus. And that's that covers pretty much the, the spectrum of financial aid that's available to students. That's the free aspect. The free aspect. Yeah. Uh, touch very quickly on what isn't so free. Well, the main thing, when you say financial aid, people think automatically loans. Uh -huh. And that's the part that's not free. That is money that you will have to pay back with interest. Uh -huh. One of the things that we were talking about earlier, April, is that you were talking about the A to G requirements for students. Uh, and they should be preparing for those when they're in the eighth grade. To make sure that they meet with their counselors and they, uh, they're taking the, the courses that will maximize their opportunities to go uh -huh. to four-year schools. Uh, after after high school, but what about the late bloomer? What about the student who uh, all of a sudden his sophomore year or whatever wasn't really taking the courses that that uh, he should have been taking, and really gets excited, wants to go to a four-year school? Uh, are they shut out of that opportunity, or what can they do? No, not at all, Bruce. And we we come across that quite frequently. If, if they do not meet the A through G requirements when they graduate, that's okay. They can start at community college and then transfer to a four-year college. A community college is college, and four-year colleges look at transferring community students before they look at high school students, so their opportunities are better if they start at a community college so, and then transfer. Uh, so a student coming out of a community college has a better opportunity maybe than a student who might have even better grades maybe coming out of high school exactly. as far as getting in and that is because they've already proven that they can handle college level material. So the four-year school is going to maybe take a better chance on them. They're their first pick. Than, than somebody else. Exactly. Uh, we've given uh, our viewers a lot of information and uh, if, you, if you didn't pick up the paper and pencil uh, maybe you can catch this show another time this week or some other time this month, but make sure you do have a paper and pencil available so you can get down, uh, get this information. This has been really good information. Uh, the best message is that everybody can go to school. There is financial uh, aid available to everyone. Uh, after this short break, uh, we'll take a look at how South San Francisco is providing local money for local students. Stay with us.
Prudential California Realty is pleased to support the South San Francisco Unified School District. With several offices located throughout the South Bay, we help home buyers realize their dreams of ownership and sellers maximize their home investment. Prudential California Realty is a longtime partner with education, having created the Education Foundation in 1992, which provides grants to teachers throughout Northern California. Prudential California Realty, your partner in real estate. You've always been like a son to me, Mikey. And that's why I find it unfortunate that we're in this little situation here. Peninsula TV, how will it affect you? With me tonight to talk about uh, local money for local students in South San Francisco are Marta Bookbinder, City of South San Francisco Coordinator of Collaborative Projects, and Weiling Ng, local businesswoman and member of the board of Ronald McDonald House Charities. Ladies, welcome to uh, Our Children, Our Future. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on our last segment, uh, we were talking to the high school counselors, and uh, they talked about the large number of scholarships that are available to students. And, and one of the things that we didn't have an opportunity to talk about, and I know you feel kind of passionate about this, Marta, is uh, <laughs> that we have lots of students, probably too many in our community, that are paying companies to search for scholarship monies. Tell me about that. Well, first of all, I wanted to say that there's no need to have to pay for information that is freely available. Um, we, we have found out that parents have been paying companies uh, and then they don't necessarily receive money for their children and sometimes it gets very costly. The information about scholarships and availability is, is out there and uh, counselors from colleges tell this to parents. You don't have to pay for this information, it's free. So how can you get to this information is, is the question. Uh, I think there will be parents who are very savvy and they know about things and they will look through computers or, and uh, they know how to navigate and find it. Through it's, work and lots uh, of other places. Exactly. Yeah. And there will be students also who will access information. They may not need as much help. But there are other parents that feel like they may have never gone to college or that they don't understand the system and then they hook up with uh, uh, ways that are offered to them may not necessarily be the best way to go because they can actually help their, themselves through something like the public library. Yeah, you came across a gold mine just recently. It, exactly. T tell us about that. The South San Francisco Public Library um, is ready to help parents. Uh, they have had a brochure that says, Unlock the Mystery of Financing College. And it's a beautiful brochure that they can offer the parents. And not only offer the brochure, but they will actually help them to access this information through, you know, online, periodicals, or whatever. So you can actually go to the library, the public, South San Francisco Public Library, and ask for the help. So that would be one step I would certainly recommend to parents if they are feeling like they don't know where to go. Another real important place to come is coming up soon this month, and uh, January 22nd, the okay. Community Learning Center uh, from, the, from the library right. is hosting the second annual uh, Youth Scholarship Forum. Tell us about the forum. What is it and how did it come about? What happens is, in South San Francisco, we had about three years ago, several different entities came together that wanted to put money to give to scholarships, um, especially for seniors who were graduating from high school. So we had in, South San, in South San Francisco, we had the South San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they put in together money from the different uh, businesses, and they have given now for, it's going to be two years now, 
$10,000, which is $1,000 scholarship for each student. Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, others who had been doing it before, uh, and they had also the same thing. They want to award the money because they're local businesses awarding money to local students. And then we have had, it's almost like a snowball effect because we also now have Kaiser Permanente, which is based in San Francisco, and they now have also started the scholarship program two years ago for Latino students because the Latino staff from Kaiser was doing it. So we're having all these different uh, businesses interested in awarding money to local students. Uh, scholarships are competitive, but because this is being, uh, you know, just centered on the students that are locally going to the high schools or to, may, they may not go to the local high school, but they go, they are live in South San Francisco, they qualify to have access to And so you money. brought all of these scholarship entities together for well, one night on January 22nd, and, and hopefully parents and students right. will come to that, uh, because in the, a lot of the money wasn't being used, was it? It wasn't well, being accessed. That's what happened is there was a disconnect happening. There was local money, but there, it wasn't getting to the local students. And so we came together because I was hearing from both ends, you know, where are the the scholarships and I was here where are the students mm -hmm. <laughs> so the community learning center decided to step in and just try to make make it possible you mentioned both. a couple but what other scholarship uh, are available at the forum uh, there will be uh, McDonald's house charities is going to be uh, one of the accessible mm -hmm. scholarships that they Kaiser Permanente Chamber of Commerce we have also the Peninsula Community Foundation wants to outreach and serve the North County area of the students. We have also invited since uh, last, since we started LULAC, which is an organization for Latin American students based in San Francisco, and they come in with the resources. And uh, we have had interest from different people, and they are coming to try to help the South San Francisco families. The, the interesting thing about the forum is that we ask that the students come with their relatives sure. with their parents. So they can get the information. So that we are actually empowering both because the student needs the help of the parent and the parent needs the help of the student. Excellent. And Wei Ling is with us tonight and she's with the R R R Ronald McDonald House Charities. And tell us about that specific charity and that okay. scholarship. All right. Ronald McDonald House Charities sponsors three scholarship programs for minority students. The first one is the Hesea program and this is targeted towards the Hispanic students and these are all for seniors heading to college. The second program that we have is the Future Achievers program and this is for the African American community, the students. The third program we have is the RMHC Asia program, Asian Students Increasing Achievement and this is for the Asian and Pacific Islander American students. We have some slides uh, uh, showing uh, th those particular uh, uh, students receiving uh, their awards. Tell us a little bit more about the scholarship itself. What is the criteria uh, for students uh, that want to apply, and how do they apply? Okay, um, scholarship application forms have been sent to all high schools. So if you're attending a high school currently, please ask your school counselor or school principal if the, you can have an application form. They're also available on our website, which is www.rmhc. Dot org, and you can download an application form from the website as well. Um, the criteria we are looking at is, you know, knowing that those top-notch students will have academic scholarships, and the, um, you know, uh, financially needy students will have financial help of some kind. We are targeting the students that are community leaders and are very involved in the communities, and also we're looking for those students with a lot of potential that may not be reflected in their grades or various activities. The well-rounded student. Exactly. Excellent. So don't forget the Youth Scholarship Form on January 22nd at the Community Learning Center. Local money for local students. Thank you, Marta and Wei Ling, for joining us with that information. When we come back, we'll meet a local scholarship recipient from a year or two ago who has become a self-published author of a children's book. Stay with us. If you live on the peninsula, there's only one place to get the latest news on business, sports, politics, education, and your community. Peninsula TV, Channel 26, the Peninsula and South Bay's Emmy Award-winning programming resource. For more information or for a programming schedule, go to pentv.tv or call us at 650-637-1936. Peninsula TV, your community programming channel. 
Real estate with Bobby Decker is for anyone who owns a home or aspires to do so. Everything that is important to or an interesting facet of home ownership will be covered by our program. Please join us. You won't want to miss Real Estate with me, your host, Bobby Decker. Emmy Award-winning Peninsula TV provides a large multifunctional TV studio and video production facility, state-of-the-art equipment, and affordable prices. Let our professional staff and crew produce your company or organization's next video, or create your own TV series and air it on one of the Bay Area's largest community cable channels. Contact Peninsula TV at pentv.tv or call 650-637-1936. In the spotlight segment tonight is Brenda Valencia, currently a student at Skyline Community College, a graduate of South San Francisco High School uh, in 2003. Brenda, welcome to Our Children, Our Future. Nice Thank to you. have you this evening. Thank you. Nice being here. Uh, Brenda, when you graduated from high school in 2003, you needed financial help in order to go to school. Uh, how, what did you do? Um, at the time, I was working at the Community Learning Center in South San Francisco, and my boss, Martha Bookbinder, um, told me about some scholarships that he, she had come across, mm -hmm. and um, she told me to apply for them. I applied for, I think it was three of them, and I received one from the Kaiser Permanente Latino Association for $1,000. And with that, you were able to... Pay for my books and pay for uh, tuition at Skyline College, where I am right now. Your first year? Yeah. Uh, are you in your second year now or your first year? My second year. You're in your second yeah. year at Skyline College. Uh, what message, I think it was a little bit tougher than that when you talked to me the first time. It wasn't quite that easy. What message do you have for students who are coming out of high school about scholarships? Well, at first it was, um, since I am the first in my family to go to college, I, mm -hmm. had a, I had a search for it online. I had to search for different ways of finding scholarships because no one in my family knew how to do it. So um, I think the best thing that I could say to other students would be to... Uh, Go out there and look for the scholarships on your own because they're not, you're not going to always be lucky and just have them fall on your lap. You have to go out there and really search sure. for what you want. Uh, which is kind of what you're all about, which gets <laughs> us to the next thing I want to talk about, and, and that's that you're 19 years of age yeah. and you published a book, yes. a children's book. Yes. <laughs> uh, where did this come from? Well, um, I'm the eldest of three children. And uh, when I was about six years old, my youngest brother, David, was born uh, both mentally and physically handicapped. And um, at the time, I didn't really know how to deal with the idea that he was receiving so much attention. My parents were taking to him to the hospital or to the doctors and physical therapy. And, and I kind of felt that, not rejected from my parents, but just felt left out. Left out. Yeah. yeah. And so I didn't want to tell them for fear of them feeling more stressed than they already were. Mm -hmm. So I did what I knew best and I pulled out a journal and I wrote down my feelings on paper. So you did that for how long? I did that from about six years old. Since, since I was six years old to now, I still constantly write in, in a journal. And, and the, the idea for the book uh, came out of something that you were doing at South City High School. What was that? It was the Senior Exit Project, yeah. Uh, what is, very briefly, what's the Senior Exit Project? The Senior Exit Project is a project that is done in order for a senior to graduate from high school. And what it is is um, you must do 30 hours of, um, of something that you've always wanted to do for all, all your life. And for me, it was to write a children's book about children with disabilities. So uh, I worked 30 hours with a mentor and searched on the internet and just found different ways to try to publish a book about my brother David. So, so what, how, how, how easy or difficult was it to, to get this book published? It was actually very difficult. Um, I didn't know anyone who had published a book so I had to really just look for the resources out on the internet and just hours of research and looking it up. So I finally came across um, a self-publishing company, which was called Trafford Publishing, and it's based in Canada. And I sent them the text of my book, and they wrote me back and um, offered me a package deal through them. And um, 
I took the package and I sent in my, my the text for my book and and you're an the author. Pictures. And now let's author. take let's take a look. Can you get a shot of this? This is Brenda's book. Can we get a close up of this? And the title is What about me? What about me? And uh, the illustrations. The illustrations are actually photographs, and um, I printed them out. I scanned them, and then I printed them out in black and white. And I got an artist who, by the name of Marta Ayala, mm -hmm. who um, colored them in for me to give it a more realistic look. And yeah. uh, I, I want to show the viewers your, your favorite picture, your favorite illustration in this book. Yeah. Can we get a close-up of this, Joel? OK. And what's and, and is this David? Is this your brother? Yeah, that's my brother David. And is this uh, from an actual photograph of David? Yeah, that is an actual photograph. So your brother's in the book. Yeah, he. <laughs> and and uh, what was the message of the book? What did the what is the good news about your story? Well, the storyline is that I come home from school and I'm having a bad day, and I want to tell my parents about it, but they're so busy with David that that they don't have um, time to actually listen to me. So. Um, they end up talking to me and we end up working it out and I see that David is not really just trying to take all the attention from me but rather he's a blessing to our family and he's brought us together. And uh, where can people get this book? They could get it on Trafford.com, www.trafford.com or at Amazon.com or through the Trafford, um, order them straight through Trafford at, and I have the phone number. <laughs> you have the phone number. Yeah. Too bad we don't have it on the screen. Can we get one more shot of this this book? What about me? Uh, coming to most bookstores near you, I'm sure. Uh, Brenda, what about the future for you? What 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 are your future plans? Well, I plan to major in advertising. No and, surprise there. <laughs> and um, I I do plan to make another book as soon as this one's launched out a little further. Uh -huh. I plan to. Um, I already have another book written, but I'm just planning to get it back out there and do the same thing I did with this one. And that one's based more towards um, David's actual disabilities and teaching other children that even though David is a little different, that he does a lot of the same things that normal children so do. I know one of the questions you ask and hear of your parents, will David ever be able to do the things that, you know, that, that I do at other, or that yeah. other kids do? Uh, so uh, so you, you want to continue to write your books. Mm -hmm. And what's the, do you have a title for your next book? Um, it was called David's Story. That's what I'm building. David's Story. That's yeah. great. That's great. Uh, what else is, is in store for, for you, do you think, in the future? Um, I plan on going to San Jose State uh -huh. and um, just majoring in, in advertising and just hopefully I could one day, if Gap is out there, <laughs> work for Gap and and the head companies there. <laughs> One last question about the book because it's really fascinating. What's the message for, for, for young people? The message is to not judge a book by its cover, basically. Uh -huh. That was the whole uh, theme I had when I wrote this. And it's don't judge a book by its cover because there's a lot more contents inside a person than what's outside. Well, Brenda, yours is a wonderful story, and, <laughs> and uh, you're an amazing person, and I know you're going to be extremely successful. Thank, Thank you, and good luck with whatever it is that you do, and good luck with the book, and, and hope people go out and buy it and, and share it in the family. Uh, if you heard no other message tonight, then uh, maybe uh, this is what I should leave you with. Uh, don't let the lack of finances, first of all, keep you from pursuing your dreams or, or your children's dreams. Uh, my guests, uh, Diana Brock and, and April McCoy, counselors at uh, South City El Camino High School, Marta Bookbinder and Wailing Ng, and definitely Brenda Valencia, all have been uh, living examples of, of what you can do and, and to stay with it. That's all for tonight. Remember, in South San Francisco, we know our children are our future. See you next time.